Okay, so we have just left the um, Act 1, and we've just left Kate. And when I said resolution, I mean more she's resolute at this point. There's a sense of resolution, and she is more resolute that this is what has to happen at this point. It's not really a resolution to her problem just yet. Um, but now we are ready to break into Act 2 where the hero or the heroine definitely leaves her old world situation and enters a strange new one. Um, we leave the thesis world and enter the upside down opposite world of Act 2. And um, Snyder refers to this act as the antithesis because it is the opposite of um, Act 1 in a lot of ways. Um, and so the ways that or the way that we're going to focus in this section on um, there being a strange new world is Kate's work, since that is what has initiated um, this whole process. Um, her husband leaving has too, but let's focus for right now on the work. So notice too that there have been there's a rhythm of, of things going up and down, um, meaning that opening image it's kind of a down but not terribly so it's kind of down then we have the theme stated this is kind of an up because things work out for her she's happy then this is not really up or down it's just kind of moving along then we have a big down here we have another down here and now um, it's about time for an up here. So um, let's say that to you know begin to cope with things, um, her work situation, Kate decides to open um, or start, let's say start her own business. And um, let's say that she decides puttering around the house, she comes upon the idea of um, a product. And that product is going to be a cleaning product. And let's say to bring another character in, her daughter helps her um, come up with the idea. And she does so unwittingly. She doesn't even mean to do it. And so all of a sudden it's like a hey, let's I can I can do this. So there's something nice and you know, this is definitely outside of Kate's comfort zone, but she has, you know, business savvy to be able to to try something new. And so this is something new that she is trying. So there's our break into Act 2. And now um, the other parts of the strange new world. So we've dealt with work in the above beat. And um, now we're going to deal with family and romance in this beat. So we've taken care of this and now the family beat is going to be um, oh and they talk about here or he talks about here um, secondary plot line um, loves love interest the love story and I want to give Kate essentially two love stories and love story doesn't have to be romantic necessarily. So we're going to give her a traditional romantic love story and also secondary um, non-romantic love story. And this love story is going to be with her and Kate's son. She has an adorable um, daughter and we're going to give her a not so cute, not so cute teenage son. And she's going to find out that he is in a lot of trouble. So I see Kate you know, getting this idea, getting excited about the idea, and then getting a phone call that son has been, um, what's the word? Let's see, not expelled, but suspended. Or maybe he has been expelled, but she hasn't been paying attention that much, so she's like shocked that it's to this level. Um, and, um, you know, maybe she finds out he's missed, you know, or missed or skipped, you know, like something crazy like 27 days of school 
And also another thing, well, I like this idea even better, that he has been, he's done, he's done some kind of prank, um, like a, a serious but really funny prank um, that requires deviousness and intelligence. And it's just one of those really thoughtfully funny, quietly funny pranks that, you know, would be great for dialogue and great in terms of expressions where Kate's like, you did what? You know, like maybe he, I don't know, rigged the computers in a certain way or did something, but something that requires intelligence and things just to show that he was a smart kid, but just, you know, um, misguided in some ways, whatever. But um, so there's there's another storyline there. And this is going to be a big storyline because, you know, Kate's lesson in, in this story is supposed to be about putting family first and, you know, having misplaced um, values and, and stuff. So um, or misplaced priorities. So, yeah, he's going to end up being really important later. So, yep, And then the last big thing is romance so let's have her meet a let's say she's cleaning products so I'm thinking house so I'm thinking contractor who's also a new next door neighbor and conveniently attractive and you know non plus or not non say Mm, unmoved maybe unmoved but oh I know a better word unfazed by Kate's um type a this I know it's not really a word but whatever so so yeah these are two things that are happening two new things that are happening and it you know it doesn't have to be one right after another but just this is kind of how things are going to flow so um now we're into fun and games um and let's move all this down some or rather the promise of the premise and gives the story trailer friendly moments meaning you know movie trailer friendly moments and usually a lighter in tone and builds to a big victory at the midpoint, the fun part of the story. So this is where I think of, oh, so the main character is exploring the new world and the audience is entertained. This is where we have the nice montage scenes of, um, you know, Kate, Kate um, buying supplies, Kate in overalls painting um you know or you know painting her work area or whatever um what else um new logo in place and there's upbeat music in the background and we see her you know um just doing little various cutesy things or whatever and we may see a little bit about um the contractor you may see a little bit about her son, but right now we're still um, all about the work scene. So that's the fun and games. It's pretty upbeat. And again, like they say, it's leading to um, a victory at the midpoint. Okay, so maybe the victory would be um, Kate has a new, Kate has first opportunity to sell and that's supposed to be opportunity. It's changing it for me, so I'm just going to spell it out. To sell her product. So things are looking good, right? We have a big up. Well, that has to be followed, of course, by a big down. So the story builds to a false victory, right? Where we think things are going well and they're going to fall short. So it looks like things are going well. That's why it's called a false victory. Um, sometimes it happens where it's a false defeat, but generally it's, you know, things are going well at this point. So new information is revealed that raises the stakes. So let's, let's raise the stakes in all of these. So we have work, 
We have family. We have romance. So let's raise the stakes in everything. So because we've had a big up here, we need to have a big down. So let's say um, her first presentation um, goes terribly. Right? Let's make it go badly. Um, something goes wrong with, with, with her product in some way. Then, and also let's say that she's, she's running low on money. Now, remember at the beginning, she's doing well. So I don't know why things aren't going well with her money, with money, but who knows? Maybe dad wasn't making as much as we thought, whatever, but some needs to be where this is a problem that the presentation isn't going well now that she's a sole breadwinner. Um, with family, maybe the son, maybe they get into a screaming match. Um, something has to happen, you know, with him where um, it was kind of cutesy the way that he, she picks him up from school. She's not happy with him, but she does kind of smirk a little bit that that was kind of funny what he did, whatever he did, maybe. Um, and then with the romance, let's say instead of dealing with a contractor, she sees um, her husband out with someone else who looks happy, something like that. Um, but it's, you know, things are all kind of not not cool by the midpoint. 